a crisp, crystal clear Friday evening here in Scotland. I've got the deep sky rig set up to do some astrophotography tonight and I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride. My name's Helena and welcome back to my ch- Actually no, before, before I- I've made one slight change to the deep sky rig tonight. If you haven't noticed already, I have a new telescope on the rig. This is a new but not new telescope, as in I have had it for about a year, but my guiding hasn't been sufficient enough to guide at um, an 840mm focal length. I've been guiding quite well at 510, so I thought I was ready to take the step up to my 840. The Esprit 120 is a triplet aphochromatic refractor, meaning that it uses lenses to align the colour channels RGB, which therefore means it is more um, efficient in colour correct than say a doublet is like my previous ATED telescope. I'm going to be doing unfiltered imaging tonight. There's two reasons for that. The first one is, uh, well, the filter cell hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> That's the main reason. <laughs> and the second reason is I'm really interested to see what unfiltered work is going to look like from a Bortle 2 sky because I don't exactly suffer from light pollution. So I want to see how much contrast my conditions can bring out without a filter. Hello, we are already in a very different setup to normal. I need to be looking here and not here. This is gonna get very confusing. <laughs> I'm shooting with my Canon 60D just because I want to find an alternative to up the film quality for you guys. And while I'm not using it when it's not on the telescope taking photos, I thought I'd use it for filming while I can. So it's actually been two weeks since I went out to photograph the rosette. With new equipment, things happen, and I wanted to have full concentration on the equipment at the time um, to get it up and running and set up. I'm glad to say I did. This was my guiding graph. It went really well. It was around 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so I had no problem with stars trailing at all at a focal length of 840 millimeters, which I thought was very, very impressive. Now, of course, the equipment that I did need when I was shooting, the filter cell and the button off mask have just arrived after the imaging session. So I will be going back to the rosette very soon to do a similar comparison. But I'm gonna jump into PixInsight with you guys and show you an unfiltered shot of the rosette nebula from a Bortle 3 sky area. All right, so here we are in PixInsight. This isn't gonna be the best image of the rosette you have ever seen but I am very happy with it for a first light with this telescope. What I was especially surprised and pleased with, with the Esprit 120, was the depth of field it holds. I know I shouldn't have been shocked by that, but see when you see it and it comes up on your screen in a single sub, it just looked incredible. So I've only done one small session of noise reduction on this image and you can zoom in quite far and see so much more detail in the photo than you'd normally be able to. These wisps of dark nebulosity at the side are really prominent in the image. It almost makes it look 3D. I also made a black and white version, so very similar, just without the color. Now, I am quite fond of the black and white version, and I'm also fond of the color version. And it's gonna be really interesting to see a side-by-side -side comparison when I do end up getting um, the filter stuck into the imaging train because I would like to sit with two photos next to each other, one filtered and one unfiltered, both from a Bortle 2 zone, 
to see whether it is actually worth buying these filters when you live in low levels of light pollution. Now, I did find that PixInsight's dynamic background extraction did have quite a difficult time um, when it came to differentiating between the nebula and the background. Now, obviously, you're only putting the squares on the background sky, but because it's such a tight field of view and I could only maybe use them in this corner and maybe up in this corner and maybe one down here, it was very difficult to get an even background. So it's going to be interesting to see whether having a filter makes that easier. I'm also quite a fan of that without a filter, I managed to get some lightness here and it sort of creates a gradient towards the outer shell of the rosette. I think that's really nice and that was with minimum colour correction. I literally just came over to here to colour calibration and used the default settings on the photo and it worked out fine. Now obviously in an ideal world we would not have these bloated stars and again the filter will help with that. One last thing I want to show you guys is some starless versions that I've made of these photographs. So I made a black and white starless version. Now within PixInsight I have um, a process called StarNet which basically analyzes all the stars and it takes them out of your photo um, to basically allow you to edit the nebulosity separately from the stars. Keep it just separated, so maybe just post a starless image or combine them back together and it just allows you more freedom when you're editing. I like the look this gives. I like It's really dramatic. It's sort of driving you into the middle of the photo. I really like what it did. The last thing I want to show you guys is the TIFF. So this is what it looked like coming straight out of Deep Sky Stacker. I was really happy with how this turned out when I saw it on my screen because obviously you can see the evident structures surrounding the entrance to the rosette where all the stars are born. So I really like that. Um, and again, this was the finished product. So this was the TIFF on the right and the finished product, oh, I can't move it, Ooh, there we go, um, is on the left. So overall, I think the first imaging session with the Esprit 120 went really well. I'm really happy with how the end result turned out and I'm really looking forward to seeing a comparison between Bortle 2 unfiltered and Bortle 2 filtered. I should be saying Bortle 3. I actually live in Bortle 2 to 3 and it says 3 on the weather chart, but we're, so we're gonna go with 3, Bortle 3. <laughs> I really hope you guys found that informative. There will be a review coming out this summer, a full-blown review of this telescope once I have been out with it a handful of times and done different projects with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy New Year, because I haven't said that yet and it is currently the 17th of January. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, happy stargazing, stay safe and clear skies.